Hello and welcome to episode three of Pink Box. I'm Jamie Titchener of Service Manager Magazine. And I'm Jace Finman of GoodCert. Jace, it seems like you've had a bit of an action-packed day um, interviewing lots of people. Um, can you give us uh, an overview of who you've been speaking to? And, uh... Yeah, well, we had a packed agenda today. We had seven different interviews that we conducted. Um, I started first thing in the morning with Paul Wilkinson from Gaming Works. Uh, yeah, he actually had some pretty interesting thoughts on the different levels of training that people go through, um, talking about how learning the theory and getting the certification is, is kind of the entry level. But he talked about three other levels in depth um, that really go to gaining a practical understanding of, of what it is you're learning and knowing how to apply it. I haven't rewatched the interview yet since I edited it and I haven't written down all the levels that he described, but I thought it was funny the way he did it. He, he sort of, <laughs> he, he kept saying, and it gets worse and it gets worse. And so he kept talking about how you can learn the topic even deeper and how most people completely miss that level. So yeah, so I, I thought that was kind of fun. And, and yeah, I, I ripped Paul a little bit during the interview because he, um, you know, he kept saying, oh, I've got, you know, this talk that I'm giving, which is, you know, a little bit controversial. And then I'm doing this one that's a little confrontational. And I told him, well, yeah, that seems to be part of your brand. And he said, oh, yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, that's, he, that's the way is, we do it. He is, a, sorry to cut in, he's, well, Paul is a bit of a character. Um, yeah. We love you, Paul. Um, yes. <laughs> so, um, but uh, who else do you see? Yeah, I also talked to Kari Nelson from Sharewell. Um, yeah, and I really enjoyed that interview. So I gave her some questions that I guess could have been easy to brush off, but I think she was really transparent and gave me some really direct answers. Um, some of the stuff I was really interested in was um, how they keep up with changing trends, how they identify new features. She talked a lot about how they work with research organizations, how they have a knowledge tool where they get feature recommendations from customers and stuff. So that was all kind of an eye-opening experience for me. Um, I know that ShareWell's a, a world-class, you know, tool vendor, uh, and there are many of those at Pink20, but yeah, to sort of pull back the curtain and, and show us how they, you know, keep abreast of, of all of the, the changing um, features that, that need to be built into the tool, that was interesting. Um, yeah, I also talked to Karthik Pasupathy from Fresh Service, and yeah, he talked a lot about um, end user experience, because that's a pretty big focus at Fresh Service. Uh, they have shifted away from being focused on the, the, the IT teams that actually manage the tool and worrying about their requirements. Um, they worry more about whether users find the tool intuitive and they have a real strategy of trying to reduce complexity and make things simpler. Um, so yeah, that was, that was neat to get that perspective. I also talked to Jade Khan from um, SysAid. Yeah. And you know, that was a really interesting conversation. So one of the things that he talked about, and I hadn't heard this before, I, I feel like I need to do some research, I need to read up on this, but he talked about the difference between automation versus orchestration. Automation meaning you're trying to make something more efficient, you're trying to you know, take it out of human hands so that it can be executed automatically. But orchestration, he said, was really about fulfillment of a task from end to end really making sure that all elements of it are, are done without human intervention um, and that they're done in a predictable way. So yeah, that, that was an interesting concept to take automation even further. And I, I want to dig into that more. In fact, I might have to follow up with Jade and ask him more questions on it and find out yeah, where I can learn yeah, more yeah. about it. Um, I mean, um, yeah. yeah. Um, from my point of view, uh, you know, since I are uh, great, Cher will look great, um, uh, gaming works, um, you know, Paul's great. I think they're all very, very switched on people. So who else do you speak to? Yeah, I talked to Rachel Spatz and Daniel Kinzel from Ninja RMM. And they had um, some interesting information about, um, well, the simplicity of the tool not requiring a lot of training, especially for, for employees that are being onboarded. You know, a lot of their customer base is um, companies that are growing exponentially and they're bringing in new people all the time. A lot of people that are fresh out of school and haven't really worked in IT before. So um, their focus is to make the tool so intuitive that you wouldn't really need to put people through a formal, you know, um, 
training program to get them up to speed that they would be able to come in and kind of recognize how it works based on how other consumer products work. So, so that was pretty interesting. Yeah, we really got into that. So I also talked to Dan Turchin, who's somebody that I met over lunch yesterday, um, just coincidentally. He's giving a talk tomorrow called AI and the Future of Work. Um, he's going to be talking about a, a, a tool and a company that he founded that's all about gathering um, raw information from all of the record keeping that's done in a business, whether it's spreadsheets, um, emails, alerts, things like that, and trying to use that to um, drive artificial intelligence initiatives within the organization. So yeah, I, I really like to hear what he had to say, but I also am looking forward to his talk. Uh, you know, I've kind of been in and out of the talks over the last couple of days, but that's one that I'm really looking forward to. I, I want to hear what he has to say about it. And then the last person that I caught was Jeff Jensen, which he is one of the only people I can say on camera that I actually already know. Everyone else, I sort of start the video by saying, this is the first time we've ever met, you know, and I want people to know that. But Jeff is actually somebody I've been in touch with since last year. We met at um, Pink 19. Um, and he owns a training business uh, that's based in Idaho and does a lot of consulting. And he and I have been, you know, kind of uh, having discussions offline back and forth about where we think the industry is and what the biggest priorities need to be and uh, what content we think um, need to be, you know, a primary focus of the new ITIL books. He's a really thoughtful guy, really smart, has a lot of great ideas. And I, I feel like tonight's interview, even though it went longer than my 10 minute limit, we went like 15 minutes. I still feel like I need to bring him back and talk to him some more because he brought up so many things that I told him I need to meditate on. So yeah, I, I think today was just a great day, a great lineup, lots of really smart people. Um, everyone was super professional. I mean, they just went right into their answers and, and, and gave it to me straight. Um, so yeah, I had a great time and I'm looking forward to doing more of that tomorrow. Yeah, uh, you know, I think um, I won't bang on too long, but I think just the amount of people that are there that are switched on really top of the line are phenomenal really. Um, mm -hmm. and, and, you know, it's a privilege to be involved with them. Um, you know, lucky, um, companies like Ninja um, and so forth, um, and some some of the more you know longer established names as well. Um, it really is um, a privilege. But anyway, um, so uh, it's good night for me. And me too. <laughs>